Hello everyone, Charles Watts here, the Arsenal correspondent at Gold, joining you the day after what turned out to be, I don't know if you want to call it a pretty flat 0-0 draw in Manchester United. It wasn't the greatest of spectacles at the Emirates last night, but a decent point for Arsenal nonetheless. First of all, apologies for not doing my usual stuff before or after the game last night. I had to do something for the Goal Instagram channel before the game, so I wasn't able to do my live uh, match reaction, uh, sorry, team news reaction and sort of warm-up stuff and after the game just didn't have enough time to do the player ratings because of uh, what I was doing after the full-time whistle and waiting for P uh, Mia Mikel's press conference. So apologies for that, but I thought I'd come on today, talk about the game a little bit more in depth, talk about what Mikel Arteta had to say after the game uh, and then start looking ahead to already a very big, big couple of games coming up this week and what the team news could be for that one. So let's focus on last night, like I said, a little bit of an anti-climax, I suppose. We're all really looking forward to it. Felt like a big, big game. And although I thought it was two really evenly matched sides, really sort of going at it and you know putting everything into the game, it never really sparkled into life. Both teams could have won it. I mean, I thought Man United shaded the first half. I thought Arsenal was certainly the better team in the second half, although United had two massive, massive chances in the second half that Cavani really should have scored on another day he would have scored. So Arsenal can probably count themselves a little bit fortunate about that. But I thought the performance-wise in that second half was really, really good. Because like I said, United were they were the better team in the first half, especially the final sort of 10-15 minutes. They really caused Arsenal problems. They were pressing very, very well. Arsenal couldn't really get out and half-time felt like it came at a good moment for Arsenal. And you, I was a little bit concerned at that point at half-time. I thought United would probably go on and win it, given the way the game was going. But Arsenal came out really, really well in the second half, I thought. Um, pushed United back, created chances, were really unlucky not to score. I mean, Lacazette's free kick that hit the bar. Pepe had a couple of chances that went just, just wide. Willian had his chance straight after coming on that probably fell to him just about the wrong sort of time, given it was pretty much his first touch. Um, instead, they had the opportunities to get themselves in front. And I think if they got themselves in front, they would have gone on and won it. Um, so they can count themselves a little bit unfortunate as well. But I think when you look at it on a whole draw was probably the fair result and both managers speaking after the game kind of admitted that as well they both knew they had the chances to win it but when they sort of look at the balance of the game and how it went it was pretty even stuff United shade in the first half Arsenal shade in the second half I think it was 16 shots to 14 in Arsenal's favour in terms of the stats only three shots on target for each team so very very balanced and um, so draw was probably the fair result as Mikel said here speaking after the game he said I thought it was a fair result I think both managers probably think they should have won it it was I think it was a big game we played face to face against each other I think both teams wanted to win it none of us scored a goal so obviously it's impossible to win the fact we had three of our best players out probably has an impact on the game but I'm really happy with the players that played today and how they tried and most importantly how the game developed at the end in the second half we were so dominant we had some big chances to win it. I think it was an important point there, Mikel made. Obviously, Arsenal lining up with that game without Kieran Tierney, without Bukayo Saka, without Pierre-Emerick and Bamiyang. Pretty much, I think, when you're naming an Arsenal 11, when you're talking about the outfield players, I mean, Thomas Partey, maybe, aside, they are the first three names on the Arsenal team sheet. Tierney, Saka or Bamiyang. You know, three massive players. And I think the fact Arsenal performed so well and matched to Man United, so look, who haven't lost away from home in the league for over a year now, club record 18 matches unbeaten on the road in the Premier League. When you consider the fantastic teams Manchester United have had in the past, that is a very fine achievement. Um, you know, title contenders as well, despite their poor result in midweek against Sheffield United. So for Arsenal to perform like they did without so many of their really key players, I thought was a was a real sort of big plus for Mikel Arteta. And it was more signs of the improvement that they've made, the progress they've made. If Arsenal played that game six weeks ago, two months ago, there's no way they would have got anything from it, given the way they were playing, the confidence in the squad, missing massive players like that. United would have rolled them over at the Emirates, no, no doubt in my mind. But the way they're playing now and the new belief they've got, and the spirit they're showing and the quality they're showing at times as well, um, you know, I thought it was a d another decent performance and it keeps the month run going. It kept the momentum. Yes, it was not a, a win, which we all would have liked, but it kept the momentum going. Um, it was another clean sheet. I think that's five in the last six in the Premier League. Now only Manchester City have a better defensive record in the league. Um, so it was a really, you know, there was plenty of pluses to take from it. Although they didn't get the three points, which they would have wanted, there was plenty of pluses to take from that performance. So I can understand why Mikel Arteta was quite happy with his players. And I have to admit, I came away from that game feeling pretty good about where Arsenal are at the moment and the progress that they're, mate, that they're making. There was a lot of decent performances. I wanted to talk a little bit about the centre-backs 
on this. I thought Rob Holding and David Luiz were absolutely fantastic again. I know, you know we all like Gabriel and we've, he's had a very, very good start to his Arsenal career. One player of the month for the first three months, deservedly so. But I think he was showing signs that it was beginning to wear him down a little bit. There were mistakes creeping into his game. Obviously, he had the red card and he's, now he's had the injuries of COVID. And although when the team news is announced, I think everyone's always kind of expecting Gabriel to come back in. I'm not really expecting that at the moment because I think David Luiz and Rob Holden have been playing very, very well. I mean, Rob Holden's in, in absolutely top form. This is the sort of form he's shown before his injury. Um, and he 100% deserves his place in the starting lineup at the moment. I thought it was exceptional yesterday, Rob Holden. Once again, I thought David Luiz was absolutely ex um, exceptional again last night. He's been named man of the match by the Arsenal supporters on the website. He was named man of the match by Sky. Um, and I think those two are absolutely deserving their place as the two centre-backs at the moment. And Gabriel's just going to have to bide his time before waiting to get back in into the team. And I don't think for a new signing as well, coming into the Premier League, it's necessarily a bad thing, especially after a few months as well, when that new player sort of buzz has worn off and that crest of a wave maybe he was riding has worn off. And like I said, there were mistakes creeping into his game. And it probably is a decent enough time just to have a little breather to adjust and to settle back into the swing of things for him. And... Just David Luiz's role is so, so important to this team on and off the pitch. He's such a leader on the pitch. He's such a leader off the pitch. He's so popular as well. He's so great with the young players. Um, and I don't think you can underestimate the importance of the role he has at this club. Yes, he makes mistakes sometimes. We all know that. We all know what David Luiz brings. But when he's on form, he's a very, very good defender. And he brings so much on and off the pitch. He, he spoke yesterday after the game. And um, there was one moment in, right at the end of the first half when Bruno Fernandes had that free kick. And you just felt like it felt like such a massive game in a, in a massive moment in the game. It was about a minute left before our time. United were well on top at this point. Arsenal had just about seen them off and just wanted to get into half time level. And then they had that free kick right on the edge of the area. And when Fernandez is over that, you know how dangerous it is. And Luis stopped it. He did his job in the wall. He stirred, he jumped, he headed it. He got a good head on it and knocked it away from the corner. And you saw he really sort of celebrated it. When he did it, celebrated like he scored a goal and everyone was kind of picked up on it. And I thought it was a really good moment. And um, he was asked about that uh, after the game in his interview. And um, he said, I think it was one of the best players in the league taking the free kicks, shooting. Bruno is amazing. He can decide the game in these moments. A free kick in that kind of position is like a penalty. You have to realise that when you play against a fantastic player, you have to try your best. He even spoke to me because he took the free kick quickly straight after the whistle to try and take everyone by surprise. But I was happy because I was focused and I saved the goal. You know, that's fantastic for a defender. Yes, everyone loves scoring goals, but for defenders, there's nothing better than, you know, making a last-ditch tackle to save a goal, making a de deflection, you know, doing a job in the wall to save a goal. I used to love when Socrates celebrated making a really good tackle, last-ditch tackle, and it was good to see Luis do that yesterday. And given the criticism he's faced at times since he's been at Arsenal and the uncertainty over his future at Arsenal at times, I think... The way he's come back in and performed recently, he deserves an awful lot of credit. And I thought it was fantastic last night. And him and Holding are absolutely the base of this real improvement that Arsenal is showing at the moment because they're not conceding goals and that gives them the opportunity to go forward and win the game. And although they didn't manage to get the win last night, they could have done. And that was because of the solid base that for the majority of the game, Holding and Louise gave to them. A little bit of an update on Bamiang. Not great. It doesn't exactly solve the... Uh, not really mystery because I think we know what the issue is now, but it doesn't make it any clearer really when Orbit is going to be back available. We all know what's happened. He had to go away to be with his ill mother. She was living abroad, so he's had to leave the country basically, although Arsenal haven't actually publicly admitted that. It's, it's very, very obvious that that's what's happened. He's now having to quarantine, having come back. Mikel was asked about it after the game. He said, we are following the rules and the protocols right now, and the protocols say that he cannot be involved at the moment. We have to respect that. And the doctor is managing the situation. Arteta was impressed on, you know, when are we going to see him back? How close could it be? Could he miss the next couple of games against Wolves and Aston Villa as well? And Mikel said, I don't know. We are working with the Premier League and the government. So Arsenal trying to resolve this situation at the moment. It's a case of, I think they'll be saying, look, we can bring him back into this elite sports bubble. We're testing him regularly. We know if he's a negative, you know, passes negative result, even if it's one, two, three negative results. We know that he doesn't have the virus. And because we've got the doctors, we've got the testing, we've got the elite sports bubble, can we get him back earlier than possible, uh, earlier than he, he has to, that maybe you know, Joe Public would have to do if he came in from abroad at the moment and had to serve his whole two-week or 10-day quarantine, whatever it is. 
So Arsenal trying to get this bomb battle. We all want Aubameyang back as quickly as possible. But I think given the situation, given what we all face at the moment, sometimes I think the government has to do the right, what they think is the right thing and not show that they're giving you know, sportsmen or people with an awful lot of money um, preference over what everyone else has to do. So it's, it's a difficult situation. It's one Arsenal are trying to manage and hopefully they can come to some sort of resolution with Arsenal, with uh, the government and the Premier League, which allows Aubameyang back as soon as possible. Because there's no doubt Arsenal need their captain and they need their star striker, especially given what happened yesterday with Alexander Lacazette. Hopefully it's not too bad. He went off after that nasty, nasty fall yesterday. I think it was Maguire kind of did that whole thing where the defender backs in, drops his shoulder a little bit, Lacazette was jumping, he went straight over him, landed really, really bad. It was kind of on his neck or on his shoulder almost more. Um, he didn't look in a good state when he was on the floor. He had treatment, he, he did get up and walk off the pitch, although he had to be really helped off by the medical staff, went straight down the tunnel, ended up in hospital. And he, But he posted a picture from um, hospital last night on his social media channels on Instagram saying, um, all good over this side and then he thanked the doctors and their fans for support so hopefully nothing serious for Lacazette and he will be available to face Wolves in midweek because like I said with Aubameyang possibly missing out Arsenal certainly need Lacazette um, to lead the line I would say I thought he was decent again last night Lacazette really unlucky with that free kick that hit the bar fantastic effort um, and uh, yeah like I said with with Aubameyang missing, you certainly want at least one of those two strikers leading the line for you because I'm not sure what we've seen from Eddie Nketiah at the moment this season that you really back him to make much of an impact if he starts in midweek. A few little other bits to clear up. I will do my player ratings at the end of this as I didn't do them last night as well, but a few other bits from the press conference to clear up. First of all, transfer latest. Mikel Arteta was asked about the future of the likes of Mustafi who's been linked with Liverpool. There is... By the sounds of it, something in that one. There is a little bit of interest in Liverpool. They are looking at various centre-back options. And Mustafi is on their list, um, according to very you know worthwhile reports, certainly from the Liverpool end. And, and everywhere, so that will be an interesting one to keep an eye on. Could they get some sort of loan deal until the end of Mustafi's contract? Arsenal will be quite happy to do that, I would imagine. Gets, their weight, gets his wages off the wage bill between now and the end of the season, frees up a spot in the squad. Um, and... Uh, he's not going to play much football, that's fairly obvious. He's not even making match day squads anymore. So if they could come to some sort of agreement with Liverpool, they would do that. Um, as Reese Lelson and Ainsley make the Niles, you know, the futures of a few players to sort out between the end of the transfer window. Mikel was asked about that and he said, well, there are some conversations at the moment going on. I spoke with all the players about their situation because they are all aware of the minutes that they're playing and they want to improve their situation. I'm willing to help them. The club is willing to help them and we'll try and find a solution at the end but I don't know whether it will be the case or not. So I think there's certainly some conversations that are going to be had between now and the end of the window, which is obviously only a couple of days' time now, to see if Arsenal can get these players out and get them some minutes. I'm still not convinced by Ainsley Maitland Niles. I don't, and this is just my opinion, I'm just not convinced it's a good move to send him out alone. I think he could still be an important player between now and the end of the season in terms of squad cover for various few positions. I don't like the idea of strengthening a, strengthening a potential rival for a top six spot either but uh, that's, who's who's that for me to say i'm just saying that for opinion it's arsenal have got to make the decision or not whether it's worth it financially to do so reese nelson i absolutely think should go out on loan now and get some minutes and see what he can do between now and the end of the season and like i said already with mustafi i think that's the best for all parties if arsenal can get him out a little bit of team news ahead of the game against wolves i'm expecting kieran tinney and sabias to be back full training um with the squad tomorrow they were training before i think it was on friday but they were training kind of away from the rest of the first team squad in the with the players who weren't really going to be featuring in the starting 11 against united but they were you know <clears throat> they were playing proper contact football and everything like that so i imagine they'll come straight back into the full training picture this week which will be good news pablo mari is due to return this week as well not sure and makai saka arsenal saying it was a precaution he was left out last night he's got a sore hip and uh, they were sending for caution, nothing serious. So maybe we'll see Saka, Saka back involved again against Wolves, which will be a big plus. We all know how important he is. Bamiang, like we said, is unlikely given his situation and given how long he's been without training now. Lacazette looks like he's going to be OK. So a bit of a mixed sort of team news for the game against Wolves. We will find out more very, very soon. We're speaking to Mikel Arteta in his post in his pre-match press conference bright and early tomorrow morning, 9am. So I will bring you a video after that to update you on everything he had to say about uh, the situation and the injury latest. Right, before I go, let's quickly rustle, rattle through the player ratings as I didn't get to do it 
last night. Some good performances, like I've already said, from the likes of Louise and Holding. I thought Nicolas Pepe was decent as well. Always a threat for Arsenal. Good performance for him, backing up his good performance against Southampton. Right, Bert Leno, excellent again from Bert Leno. As I said in the last video, he's really stepping up now and he's back on the top form that we've become accustomed to him from. I think it was an, a, sh a shaky start to the season with him, possibly because of how long he'd been injured for and everything that had gone on with Martinez. Maybe his confidence was a little bit knocked, but right now he's in fantastic form. What a save that was from Fred in the first half. Um, did everything he needed to do well yesterday, so Bernd Leno for me gets an eight. Hector Bellerin I thought was fairly solid. I thought all the, all the defenders were, to be honest, they all performed pretty well, um, stuck to their task and uh, kept out United. So I'm going to give Bellerin and Cedric Suarez the two fullbacks. They both get sevens. Uh, Rob Holding and David Luiz, fantastic for me. They both get eight, and I'm going to give Luiz mad of the match. I thought he was great. Um, but both of them both get eight. Luiz and Holding, really good performances from the two central uh, centre-backs. In terms of central midfield, I thought Granit Xhaka was very good. He continued his impressive recent form. Um, really playing well at the moment, Xhaka. Credit to him for that. I'm going to give him a seven. Thomas Party, I thought, was a little bit off. His passing certainly didn't have his radar switched on for me. Made a couple of nice runs in the first half where he broke the lines and looked a threat. But his final his, his effort on goal, you know, his sort of shooting, everything in terms of his end product was just a little bit off yesterday. Not his finest performance. He admitted that himself after the game as well. So Thomas Party is going to get a six. Gabriel Martinelli, I thought it was pretty bright in the first half. Martinelli went off at half-time and replaced by Willian, and I initially thought it must have been an injury, but it doesn't sound like it was. Um, I did actually think he played too badly, but um, I thought he did his defensive duties really, really well, made a couple of important blocks. He made a couple of bright moments going forward as well, but only on a pitch for 45 minutes, so I'm just going to give Gabby a five. Can't really give him too much more than that. Like I said about Pepe, I thought he was bright. Always looked a threat. Unlucky not to score a couple of goals on another day. He could have done with those two left-footed finishes. One in the first half, one in the second half that just rolled past the uh, far post. So I'm going to give Nicolas Pepe a seven. I'm going to give Smith Rowe a six. I thought he was bright. When he got on the ball, he did look a threat, but didn't get on the ball enough to really influence the game too much. But when he did, he certainly showed he was more than capable of operating at that level. So Smith Rowe gets a six. And Alexander Lacazette, I thought, played well, led the line well. Unlucky not to score with that really, really good um, uh, free kick to hit the bar, so Laka gets a seven. In terms of the subs, I can't really give Odegaard anything or Nketiah or anything. They came on right at the end. Willian, I thought, had a decent performance. Actually, yes, he missed that chance in the first, uh, straight away after coming on. Uh, probably fell to him at the wrong time. It took a little bit too long. Weak, pretty weak finish. Probably should have put his foot through it from there. Hit it with a lot more power. But I thought he played pretty well, Willian. I know he's got a lot of grief, but when he plays all right, I think you've got to give him the credit. And he set up Nicolas Pepe with one nice bit of play down the left. Pepe was unlucky to have his shot blocked. So I thought on the whole, it was a decent enough performance from Willian. I'm going to give him a six as well. Right, that's it from me. Thank you for watching, everyone. Like I said, apologies for the lack of game stuff um, before the game or after the game last night. Uh, I will try and get back to normal against Wolves in midweek when I will be travelling up to Molyneux. Like I said as well, press conference tomorrow morning, 9am with Mikel Arteta. I will come back on, record a video afterwards to discuss what he had to say. Thanks for watching, everyone. Enjoy your Sunday and I'll speak to you soon.